Yes, there is one action that I run on almost every single photo that I edit in Photoshop. It's not magic, it doesn't fix your photos for you, but it does set you up for a very powerful, professional style workflow that's easy to understand and makes editing a lot quicker. If you're too lazy to build it yourself, I'll include a link in the description below, but this video will explain how to assemble the whole set of actions, and by the end, you're gonna understand Photoshop a little bit better. First, I'll demonstrate it really quickly by running the action and just editing a photo. I mean, this photo is fine as it was, but I can make it look a lot better. And the main thing here is that I've got a stack of layers that each do a different thing and I end up reaching to all the time. There are built-in tools within Photoshop that can do this stuff, but if you don't do it on separate layers, you have no ability to go back in time and make changes to it. So we're trying to break this down in a way that is manageable, simple to understand and easy to repeat. There, so we can take a look at the before and after of this photo. I mean, a lot of this is manual work. Most professional workflows aren't automated, so it's good to learn this stuff. Now, let's go a bit more in depth. Let's see how it works. Here's the photo of my wife, Anya, that we're gonna be working with, and the goal of this whole action is to set us up for some powerful retouching. So if I run it real quick right now, you can see that over here on the right, it creates all the layers that you need for a powerful professional retouching workflow. So let's start all over. I told you I'm gonna make you work for it. We're gonna create a new action. I'm gonna just call it Stallman's basic setup. If you haven't used actions before, it's really simple. Basically this little red light comes on and it means that Photoshop is recording everything that you do. And next time you press play, it's gonna repeat all that. So I'm gonna do my set of things that I do every single time, starting with creating a single layer that is called sample. To show you how it works, I'm gonna stop recording for a minute. And sample is just where I do my cloning and healing. So using my clone stamp, I'm just gonna quickly remove this string back here. And you'll notice it is on a new layer, but sampling from the main image. How do we do that? The key is that up here in this sample menu, you have to change it from current layer to current and below. If you only take one thing away from this video, it's that you should always be cloning and healing on a separate layer. I'll quickly show you why. Let's say I wanna remove this logo. Removing logos is something we do for stock photography all the time. Now it's gone, but we've left this big gap in the line. So we have to draw it back in. Temporarily, I'm gonna create an extra layer just to demonstrate this. So now we have two sample layers now I'm gonna use Puppet Warp to make this align. But now the top layer is smoothing things out a bit too much. I'm gonna take the eraser and remove chunks of that. And I don't need to keep both of these layers, so I'm just gonna merge down. And now I've got this one sample layer that has the logo and that string removed. So anytime I could bring them back, or if I felt like I overdid it, I can just scale it back a little bit. I'm completely flexible in the cloning and healing. So I'll just quickly go through and do a basic clone and heal of the whole image. All right, that's it. I know that was really quick. So if you want to go more in depth cloning and healing, let me know in the comments, but there's no time for it in this video. Let's keep moving forward. Next, I'm going to create a folder and that's because all of the next three layers are connected to color. Let's take a quick break from all of our hard Photoshopping work to thank the sponsor of this video, .us. That's right, the domain .us. Although I think it's pretty cool as .us as well. There's not that many two letter words that fit at the end of a domain that can form a complete sentence. .us is the web address of choice for anyone with a dream to chase, an idea to share, a cause to champion, or a business to promote. If you're looking for a domain that is uniquely you, look no further than .us. It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from, a .us web address is the place to share your story online. After all, the United States was built on a spirit of innovation and inclusion. One of the great things about it is that it is memorable, especially if you can think of the way of fitting .us in there. I still think that's a great idea. .us is short, distinctive, and easy to remember. It's not such a cluttered namespace like some of the more traditional domains. Now you've got room for everything. There are so many available. Try searching for yours that you're thinking of right now. I bet it's there. In fact, when I searched for mine, fullstackcreator.us, it was there. All I wanted to do is create a really simple little landing page where I could post a video that I explained my full stack creator concept. You've heard me mention this before, right? Anyway, I just wanted somewhere that I could send people if they're like, what are you talking about? So go to fullstackcreator.us and then you can get it. You can see what I was talking about. It only took me a few minutes to set up. And now you're never gonna forget that domain name. And of course, .us also has this great feeling of bringing people together. So whether you're a small business, a community, maybe a civic group, you're doing some fundraising, there's a million ways that this can be incredibly useful for your next project. So when you're getting ready to launch your next project, think about using .us as your domain. There's tons of them available. It's very unique and you can stand out from the crowd. And I know I've been talking about it forever and you're just full of ideas and 
ready to go launch your project. So don't worry, there is a link in the description below where you can get more information about it. Thank you so much to .us for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to Photoshop. First layer on this folder is just a normal layer, which I could create up here or press Command Shift N. And I'm gonna call it Color Replace. And all that this gets that is special is a color blend mode. And now the easiest way to demonstrate what it's doing is I could take the brush tool, choose a totally random color, let's say red, and now I could turn her purple swimsuit into a red swimsuit. That is not typically what I actually use this layer for. It would actually be for a much more subtle kind of retouching where I'd be bringing different skin tones to match across a person. This is what I'm doing constantly. So you'll see that some parts of her are warmer and cooler. And actually most of that is because of the light reflecting, not so much for real skin tones. So by sampling some of the warmer areas and drawing it in on the cooler areas, everything is just evened out. But of course I'm an idiot and was recording all that. So I'm gonna just select those last few things, stop recording and hit delete. Easy way to correct any mistakes along the way. And I start recording again. And that's one way I can warm and cool things up, but it's something I have to do so often. I also create dedicated layers to it. So this is a curves layer and I am going to make the reds a lot redder and the yellows a lot yellower. But obviously this goes way too far and to find out why over here you can see there is a white mask, meaning everything white is visible. So I'll grab my fill tool, select black as my fill color and just click anywhere. And now I have filled the mask with black. Black is hidden, white is visible. Now I'm gonna rename this layer to warmer. And before we use it for anything, let's just create our cooler layer, which is another curves layer doing exactly the opposite, bringing the reds and the blues in the opposite directions. Again, much too far, but kind of try to balance it so it's similar to what we were doing. In the warmer layer, I'm gonna rename it right away to cooler. And we have to fill that mask. Let's do it a different way this time. I'm gonna make sure that black is my background color and just press command delete. It's a very useful key command to memorize. Let's pause the recording for a second. So now this color folder has three different layers in it, all that I use to basically adjust the white balance of the photo. That's the main thing I'm changing to keep it looking natural, but also retouched. So I'm gonna go in here and there's some parts of her skin that I can tell are just a little bit cooler than others. To be subtle about it, I've got to turn my brush down. I mean, I'm gonna go down to 10%. And I'm just going for the coolest parts of her skin to make them a little bit warmer. Same as I was doing with the color layer, it's just different ways of doing it. And you'll figure out when each one is appropriate as you try them. A really common thing to warm up is hands. You can see this part is a lot warmer than this. That happens all the time. And so I just gently bring some warmth back into it. And now it's all a more similar tone. This photo doesn't actually really need any cooling. Not all these layers get used every time, but you know, you can see what it does for it. Let's say cool down the ocean. And back to recording our action. So next up, I am gonna create a, another curves layer. This one is just bringing the luminance slider way up. So everything gets a lot brighter. Uh, I did notice this created inside of that color folder. So I'm gonna take it out. This layer is gonna make things brighter. Again, I'm gonna use that trick where I select the mask, press D for default colors. Now black is in the background and command delete will fill that mask. Let's create the opposite. This is gonna be a layer called darker and obviously it's going much, much darker. And again, we will fill it with black. If you're wondering why I didn't call them dodge and burn, it's because I think it takes a minute to memorize which is which. And I just want to get you over that hurdle. But for the record, dodging is making things brighter and burning is making it darker. And I'm going to pause my action again, just to show another very common method, which is to create a blank layer, soft light, and wherever you paint black will burn. Anywhere you paint white will dodge, but that's the reason I don't do it. Let's look at what the hair looks like using dodge in this method and now compare it to brighten that I created. It preserves the colors and I just, I do not like that soft light method. So goodbye layer. Now just one more layer to create. It is a hue saturation layer. This one's the most complicated of the bunch, but it's still not that complicated. Basically the goal of it is to unify skin tones. Actually, and this image isn't a great example. It doesn't need it a lot, but some photos will have a lot of magenta and green in the same person's skin. So I'll just show you how I get rid of it. First I select the red channel and I turn saturation all the way up. Here is how the reds are currently defined. Whatever is super saturated, that is red and it's being defined down here. You can move this around to change what red is defined as, and I want to call red everything that is the most magenta 
of of a potential skin tone. It's so like right there. That's that's the most magenta stuff. Now I can get rid of that saturation because it's not actually what I want. And instead, I'm gonna turn those magentas a little greener. I'll just bring this up by, let's say 12. Now we'll do the same thing in the opposite direction. We'll go to yellows, turn up the saturation to see what we're affecting. Right now we have all of the skin, but we just want the greenest parts of the skin, which I mean, there isn't a lot in this photo, but there it is. I can go back to zero saturation and turn this towards magenta. Again, this may not be the best photo to show it on. Nothing much is happening here, but let's, again, we will just fill it in with black. And that's it, we've created a whole stack of layers. I'm gonna stop recording and now I'm gonna use them a little bit. So some of that dodging and burning I didn't quite do yet. I'm gonna use the uh, Brighten layer to bring up some of her skin so it's a little more exposed. Go a little warmer in all those areas too, just to bring the tan out. If I wanted, I could use the darker to bring the exposure of the background down, but that'd be a little dangerous because I could start seeing some silhouetting. What I could do instead is use this uh, selection tool. This is a newer Photoshop feature. Draw a shape around her and it will use machine learning to smartly select just the human. Now I'm gonna quickly go back and use some of these layers the way I typically would. Some important things to remember as you do this. First, always be using different layers as often as possible because then you can always go back on your mistakes. Also, turn down the opacity of your brush as you're going along. You could also use flow if you prefer to do it that way and the hardness. I usually have hardness at zero. And remember, just because you created all these layers, you don't have to use them in every photo. I only use a few each time I'm editing, but it's very helpful that they're there. Also, be warned that this makes your Photoshop file bigger. Every layer that you add will inflate it a bit. So at the end, you could go through and select everything and say layer. Actually, you don't have to select them, but you can just say layer, flatten image. And then when you save, it will make it a smaller PSD. But keep in mind, you can't recover those layers later. They are gone forever. So don't do this till you feel completely done with the photo. But just so we can remember where we came from, let's look at a before, turn all the layers on, and after. Hopefully that was helpful to you guys. If you want to learn more about photography, filmmaking, and other creative pursuits, go to stallmanpodcast.com. We're also just talking about what's it like to be a creator right now, because things are pretty weird, but I've had some amazing guests on recently. One more time, thanks to .us for supporting this kind of content. If you want to see more tutorials like it, I recommend clicking the link in the description below. So thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.